Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim-visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front. And now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I that am not shaped for sportive tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass, I that am rudely stamped and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph, I that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce half made up, and that's so lamely and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I halt by them. Why, I, in this weak piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time unless to spy my shadow in the sun and descant on mine own deformity. Since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain and to hate the idle pleasures of these days. Lots have I laid inductions dangerous by drunken prophecies, libels, and dreams to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer might be. Dive thoughts down to my soul, here Clarence comes. I do the wrong and first begin to brawl the secret mischiefs that I set a brooch. I lay unto the grievous charge of others. Clarence, whom I indeed have laid in darkness, I do beweep to many simple gulls and say it is the queen and her allies that stir the king against the duke, my brother. And then I sigh and with a piece of scripture tell them that God bids us do good for evil. And thus I clothe my naked villainy with old odd ends stolen out of holy writ and seem a saint when most I play the devil. But soft, here come my executioners. Set it down. Avaunt, thou dreadful minister of hell! Thou hast but power over his mortal body, his soul thou canst not have. 
sweet saint, for charity be not so cursed. If thou deny to view thy heinous deeds, behold this pattern of thy butcheries. Blush, blush, thou love of foul deformity. O God, which this blood makes revenge his death. Lady, you know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain! Thou know'st no law of God nor man, no beast so fierce, but no some touch of pity. But I know none, and therefore am no beast. Oh, wonderful when devils tell the truth. More wonderful when angels are so angry. Vouchsafe divine perfection of a woman, of these supposed evils, so let me have some patient leisure to excuse myself. Howler than heart can think thee. Thou canst make no excuse, Corrid, but to hang thyself. By such despair, I should accuse myself. And by despairing shouldst thou stand excused, for doing worthy vengeance on thyself, which didst unworthy slaughter upon others. I did not kill your husband. Why, then he is alive? Nay, he is dead, and slain by Edward's hand. In thy foul throat thou liest. Queen Margaret saw thy murderous falchion smoking in his blood. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Dost grant me, hedgehog, that God grant me too thou mayst be damned for that wicked deed. Oh, he was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The fitter for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven, where thou shalt never come. Let him thank me that hope to send him thither, for he was fitter for that place than earth. And thou unfit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else, if you will hear me name it. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. Will rest betide the chamber where the lawyers So will it, madam, till I lie with you. Your beauty was the cause of the sword's death. Your beauty that did haunt me in my sleep to undertake the death of all the world so I might live one hour in your sweet bosom. If I thought that I tell thee homicide, these nails should rend that beauty from my cheeks. These eyes could ne'er endure sweet beauty's rack. It is a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth you. It is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that slew my husband. He that bereft thee, lady of thy husband, did it to help thee to a better husband. He is better, doth not breathe upon the earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Where is he? Here. Why dost thou spit at me? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet a place. Never hung poison on a fowler toad. Teach not thy lips such scorn, for they were made for kissing. Lady, not for such contempt. If thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, lo, here I lend thee this sharp pointed sword, which if thou please to hide in this true bosom, and let the soul forth that adoreth thee, I lay it naked to the deadly stroke, and humbly beg the death upon my knee. Nay, do not pause, for I did kill your husband. Twas thy beauty that provoked me. Nay, now dispatched was I that killed King Harry, but twas thy heavenly face that set me on. Take up the sword again, or take up me. Arise, dissembler, though I wish thy death, I will not be thy executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. I have already! That was in thy rage. Speak it again. And even with the word, this hand, which for thy love did kill thy love, shall for thy love kill a far truer love. I would I knew thy heart. Tis figured in my tongue. I fear me both a false. Then never man was true. Uh, well, uh, well, put up your sword. Say then, my peace is made. That shall you know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? All men, I hope, live so. Vouchsafe to wear this ring. Oh, to take is not to give. See how this ring encompasseth thy finger. 
Even so, thy breast encloseth my poor heart, where both of them, both of them are thine. With all my heart, Tressel and Barclay, go along with me. Bid me farewell. Tis more than you deserve. But since you teach me how black for you, imagine I have said farewell already. Was ever woman in this humor wooed? Was ever woman in this humor won? I'll have her, but I will not keep her long. Ha! Hath she forgot already that brave prince, Edward, her lord, whom I some three months since stabbed in my angry mood at Tewkesbury? A sweeter and a kindlier gentleman this spacious world cannot again afford. And will she now debase her eyes on me, my dukedom to a beggarly denier? I do mistake my person all this while. Upon my life she finds, although I cannot, myself to be a marvellous proper man. charges for a looking glass and study fashions to adorn my body since i am crept in favor with myself shine out fair sun till i have bought a glass that i may see my shadow as i pass